Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to Ramadan this year, 2022. Welcome to our show as, uh, again, inshallah. We're starting the pursuit to happiness again on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today we have uh, Hafiz Fahim with us. We have Hafiz Umar with us. And we have Ustad Ahmed with us as well. And inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, as normal, we will be, we haven't rehearsed this show for those of you who are interested, we've been uh, seeing us before. Uh, we don't rehearse anything. Uh, I always wanted uh, Hafa Zuzair to, the, our technical officer, uh, to uh, have phone calls as well, but he's he's not set up the system yet. So inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the future we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and uh, though we haven't had the meeting yet, we'll have the meeting afterwards. There'll be another podcast which I just thought about on my own upstairs now uh, and uh, yeah and I got permission of uh, Qari Muhammad Dayyab Saab so inshallah I'll reveal that later on so how is everyone everyone okay Alhamdulillah. yeah we're gonna getting the feeling of Ramadan Sharif Alhamdulillah. yeah okay so first question uh, on the table here now um, Ibadah is what people think about and Khidmah as well in Ramadan Sharif yeah um, I want to try to link the two together so First of all, um, why do we do ibadah? Uh, people say because to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need our worship. So why do we do it? Mm. Why do we worship when he doesn't need it? Yeah. I think a very basic level because he commanded us to do it. So, yeah. But so what is the benefit? Allah. We have a lot of benefit. We take benefit from ibadah. Like what? So linking it to what you said about khidma, uh, there's a social benefit. So our five daily prayers, you know, require a mosque. A mosque is then a community center at the same time. So ibadah, I think, it benefits the community. There's a definitely a huge social benefit there. Yeah, you jumped exactly on what I was going to come yeah. to. So there's a there's a social benefit. Is there a personal benefit? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Human beings always uh, searching for. You know, something to make them feel good, uh-huh. and Allah tells us in the Quran, "Allah bi dikilillahi tatmainul khulub." This ibadat of Allah is what will make you feel good. Right. Okay. So, so the, the the feeling good is a is a benefit in itself, but ultimately, feeling good, where does it lead to? I think that is what you the, the debate is. It leads to is spirituality. Right. Well, what is spirituality? Some people say it's just good manners. What is spirituality? That's a big debate. Is it just a good feeling? There's a very big debate on that. What is spirituality? And uh, me and Hafiz Zaid, we did a chaplaincy. Uh, and uh, me and Hafiz Fahim, we did the Islamic studies. I've done the master's and Hafiz Zaid's done the bachelor's. Bachelor's, correct. And I think, and you did it in uh, pastoral care. And within that, you must have covered well, spirituality. spirituality. And there is a massive debate in what is spirituality. And what I've understood is what you just said, that feeling, having a good feeling after doing something good for someone. Okay. So, for example, if you were to help someone, a poor person, and after that, you know he gives you a good response, for example, and he gives you a lot of du'as, that gives you the sensation that Alhamdulillah I've done something good for this person. Okay, that could lead to that. that that's a form of spirituality, feeling yeah. good after doing something good. Uh, okay, so you're telling me that spirituality equals good feeling. I think yeah, I think to definitely there's a level of self being satisfied with oneself. That's part of spirituality. You said Allah basically taught to my innul That's it. Yeah, it's a satisfaction that's given to yeah. us. The it's tranquility, it's given the to us. Well. Okay, yeah. right. Okay. Uh, well, I've got a question. You said ibadat. Okay, what's the purpose of doing ibadat? Me and uh, brother Nawi talking about it just after Tarawih on the way back. Okay, okay, we do ibadat, but what's what's the purpose behind it? Yeah. Okay. Now, Imam Nawi in his uh, I think he was called uh, Sharah Arba'in. Okay, he's mentioned that okay, the, the you know the first hadith in Namal Amal bin Niyat that the per, the niyat, this is the purpose, the niyat, there's four types of niyat, why we do ibadat. Okay. From there we can judge why we are doing an ibadat. Is it for Allah Ta'ala? Is it to attain Jannah? Is it to stay away from Jahannam? Or is it out of the kabur? 
which one out of that you'll find where you are <coughs> this is the answer why okay do so we ibadah? do ibadah of allah because allah <coughs> deserves ibadah but, yeah. uh, but though allah does not need it um <coughs> and uh, as hafsa was saying we <coughs> Uh, people who benefit from ibadah mm. uh, which is a good feeling and if you have a good feeling you're going to be nice to other people it has a social impact as well yeah. but my question is you know we hear about spiritual states grades stations is that just a good feeling in different levels it's a difficult question you're asking Allah, because at the end of the day those things are subjective they're not for us to really uh, you know talk about or put hukum on them has anybody ever talked about them? In books, yeah. yeah. Books, yeah, yeah. In books, yeah, definitely. I think uh, what, he's, what Khalid Bai is talking about is Imam Mahdi Narbi. He's one of them who is on that level. But I think we should just leave it in the books. Yeah. Leave it in the books. Yeah. Leave it in the books. There are discussions okay. that, that you should. There's, there's a book that I recently bought called Tanbihur Rijal, which is a. Uh, it's a refutation of the idea of you know how we sort of see wilayat and how we see waliullah qutub and all these things it's it literally rips it apart from a point of view saying that this is all nonsense in the sense that these spiritual states there's only one spiritual state and that's being the believer being the wallahu waliyul mu'minin so there are many of these discussions in the books there are those books will go into great detail that there's so many thousands that darajat of wilayat then there are those authors in history who have just said no there isn't this is all just nonsense. This is to feed the ego of men. Right, so it's an okay. interesting book. It's, it's quite so, you it's know, one of those. I've, I've, I've got a question to look at. In, in regards to Daraja, do we know our Daraja? Exactly. That's what you, I'm saying. You, you could die, even Huzul Ghospak or someone, they did not know that Daraja. Well, you could put Imam Suti out of it. <laughs> He's written in his Tariq al Khulafa that there are Mujaddis in every century, and I'm the Mujaddid of this century. <laughs> They knew. <laughs> okay, so but but uh, you're saying that. Uh, well, well, in regards to daraja, we don't know. So Ghost Park didn't know his actual daraja. What Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has destined for him, no one knows. You will only know yeah. after you die. We know that he was aware of that he had a level of wilayat. Yeah. You know certain statements that are attributed to themselves. Yeah. You know that their feet on the you know neck of the awliya. Well, it's one of those. Uh, if a person claims a daraja, that's a whole problem in of itself, isn't it? Uh, Ghost Park claimed quite a bit. But theirs was prophesied, there was foretold, we knew of their coming from the awliya Allah, verified by awliya Allah in their life and then after their life. But yeah. if, if you and I, for example, claim a status right now, I'm on this level of wilaya, yeah. uh, you think he's a madman now. Like that period from a uh, thingy, Saiwa in Pakistan, who said, okay. <laughs> Ana Habibullah. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. He, right. he, he had his flag, Habibullah, that was his title. Right, okay, fair enough. So, if for the awliya, um, uh, yeah, the Quran mentions that sort of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Allah says in Surah Al Nisa, Alam tara ila ladina yuzakuna and fusahum. Are you not observing of those people who claim to do tazki of themselves? But Allah yuzaki man yasha. Another ayah in Surah Nur, Allah does tafsir of that. Walaula fadlullahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu. Ma zaka minkum min ahadin abada. If it's not for the fadl and rahm of Allah, then Allah would not purify anyone. I mean, tazkiyah is something that comes down from above. It's not something we can claim to have done ourselves. Yeah. So uh, even if uh, somebody knows something about it, you hide it. You hide it. You hide it. It's a right. affair. Okay, that's fair enough. So, you know, for the listeners and the viewers, uh, basically, um, how do we explain? People talk about, you know, uh, becoming spiritual in Ramadan. How, how do you explain that then? Ramadan definitely has its own... Uh, sort of essence. spirituality it's got its, it's its own essence it's its own mm. nafahat and showering of blessings in and of itself mm. it's totally different it's a being I see as yeah. yeah you know so a friend of mine texted me earlier on he said uh, I'm, I'm getting that feeling of Ramadan yeah in yeah. fact uh, I don't know if Ahmad Ali remembers we uh, just at Victoria Park were requested to do 15 minute speech about what's been recited and what the first point I made was we can feel something in the air in Ramadan you can almost bite it so to speak yeah we're all nice with one another, you know, f family feuds are put aside. Why do we feel so nice in Ramadan? And what I said was this, you know, answer to that is because in Ramadan, we're actually doing what we were created to be done. We're actually serving the purpose that we were created for. And when we do that, as we're supposed to do that, Allah will give us those happinesses, you know, and alleviate our problems. Um, well, in terms of spirituality, um, as from like, someone who is isn't like um a scholar or hasn't learnt about this stuff in detail in terms of in regards to islam 
um, spirituality would would also include um, anything to do with the unseen, like s- in terms of spirits, because that's where the word comes from. Um, but wh- what if someone feel? says, y- "Are you feeling spiritual?" What does that mean to you? We obviously think of it in good regards, as you know, like you're up there. You're just feeling good. Yeah, but that's you it. know, technically, it could also be you know, spiritually in a worse state. Yeah. You, you I think you, think you know when you, when you study spirituality, it becomes a problem to get spirituality. I think. You know, when you ask a layman, are you feeling spiritual? They'd easily say, yeah. But when you ask people who have read about it in books, people will say, well, is it spirituality? Is it not? And we sort of shun the whole thing away because it's a hidden affair, as yeah. we said. You know, uh, you watch a feel-good movie or you go and have a, an, a milkshake and you feel good or you go out with your mates in the countryside and you feel good. Yeah. I mean, what's spirituality and what's not I think, spirituality? I think we should put more to that phrase, add a clause, is feeling good in the sense that we feel a lot is happy with us in that moment i mean that's what we can say so all those things do make you feel good but no one's claiming watching but a movie how spiritual. do you know is allah is happy with you for the action you did uh, ultimately how do you know i don't know <laughs> I, I would say there's so much we could I, say i would say why why uh, we don't worship the feeling we worship allah yeah um worshiping allah means doing the right thing and mm. if you're doing the right thing and you have a good feeling that's allah being pleased with you yeah. so i i think one of the things that we do and, and there's a the reason why i mentioned this uh you know if you have a good feeling in taravi you think subhanallah if you're feeling lazy bored you you missed you, your mind went somewhere else yeah and you think oh no i didn't have a good feeling i didn't have a good taravi meanings Allah is not pleased with me I didn't get spirituality so the, I think um, the better way of doing it is if somebody doesn't get a good feeling is he not a good Muslim mm. I don't think that's the case yeah, that's not the case because the thing is that even if you don't get a good feeling but you're doing the right thing Allah is pleased with you maybe yeah. Allah is testing you like are you worshipping the feeling or me exactly yeah exactly. Yeah. and you know the, pr- the problem with questioning spirituality is yeah, Allah tells us in the Quran that we we haven't been given this knowledge. Prophets have been given it. Allah has knowledge of you. ruh. They ask you about spirituality. min amri Rabbi. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that these are from the affairs of Allah. Wama utitum. Addressing us, yous as a as a community haven't been given this knowledge. Some people think this ayah means the Prophet ﷺ didn't have this knowledge. They never read the ayah properly. Mm. It doesn't say wama utina. It says wama utitum. You haven't been given, so it's we're always going to be limited it's in this plural as well. Yeah, we, you, us as laymen don't have that knowledge. Yeah, and the more we question it, the more difficult it gets, isn't it? I've still, but I have a question in terms of emotion. Um, like we spoke about feeling good and having that satisfaction there when you do something religious. Um, but I think there's a clear difference between being physically satisfied and morally satisfied, mm. not emotionally yeah, or yeah. mentally, morally, because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, we all know. The rights and the wrongs, and knowing at the end of at the end of the day you've done someone wrong, mm. you know it's always going to be at the back of your head. You won't feel good about it. I think that's that falls in terms of spirituality, but other than that, all sorts of satisfaction have you know the scientific yeah. reasoning behind it, such as the release of dopamine and exactly. everything. So it all comes on under the same category. So you wouldn't be able to, you know, put it's it difficult. aside. I think there's an aspect of where uh, of the physical we can measure our happiness and. Is that spiritual yeah. or not? But then when it comes to are we feeling spiritual, the ruh itself is its own essence and it will feel it up, ups and downs and we really can't explain it. Yeah, that's not shown in the phys- yeah. physicality of the body. Yeah. You know, there is a realm, what they call the psycho-spiritual realms, uh, where they are studying the link between spirituality and psychology and psychiatry, I mean. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things within our tradition of Tazkiyah, um, they've actually in a methodological fashion understood it scientifically understood it through psychology but the problem that leads to is when a person knows these things they really they don't feel it anymore mm. they don't feel it if i was to tell you you know when they say you do muraqaba of a certain wali and you meet them in the state of muraqaba so i read this fantastic paper on it that said this is uh, it's nothing special why if we was to spend the next hour discussing a certain wali of allah going through their shamail how they looked how they talked, how they walked, their was and irshad, and then we sat in meditation, and then what we've been studying all this time manifests itself in our mind. Uh, it's because we've been creating an image of that person the entire time, anyway. So now a person questions: Is that person in the spiritual realms coming to see me, or is this something I've just created anyway because of the one hour? So when you go down those routes, it gets very difficult to 
to stay spiritual. <laughs> is, that, is that the question they ask? Uh, how can I see the Prophet is Allah in my no. dream? And the ulama say that uh, whatever you think about, most likely you will see in your dream. This is the same with spirituality. So the example they gave that if someone was to have a very spicy biryani, but was given no water, mm-hmm. he will be what well, he will dream about water dream, yeah. because he's thirsty. Same with in regards to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you think about him, the more you think about him, most likely you'll see him. Yeah, the paper I was reading was written by a Muslim, so he 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 confesses that when it comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's different. Yeah. Science can't explain that. They themselves have the ability to visit whoever they want. Shaitan cannot even yeah. resemble that. But th- when it comes to other things, you know, science is trying to explain it. So we can't question it too much is what I think is what, what I'd say to that. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think it's wrong personally if you use good feeling in order to get closer to Allah. Oh, because it's just a vehicle. Yeah, I'm not saying it's the end, but it's the vehicle. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I think uh, one of the things. Um, I think, but in, in regards to good feeling, yeah, there are isharats in hadith as well. The Sahaba felt the same way, like the hadith from Muslim kid that <coughs> the Sahaba they, came, they said, "Ya Rasulullah, when we're sitting with you, we feel very good, but as soon as we go out of the masjid, that same essence Perfect. is not there." Do you mean? Yeah. yeah. So I think feeling good. Yeah. Would, would you translate that as feeling good? What the Sahaba felt? What what was the Exact. What would you? But I see the point Mulan is trying to make. Yeah. Like, there's the Quran tells us many times to feel good. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَلِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ You know, glad tidings and feeling good and celebration. Allah بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Enjoy. Yeah. Hadith, so expressing yeah. your happiness as well is what I am saying. Right, right, so and and wh- you know, uh, sadness is is it mentioned twice in the Quran or something like yeah. that? In other words, I think that's a stigma we should address. People think sadness is the way to Allah, like to be to get religious, you yeah, have to be uh, d- d- glo- you glo- already got where I'm trying to get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like so being good. doom and gloom, and you know, d- like like uh, this uh, this uh, young guy, uh, he married. Uh, he didn't want to marry a short fat girl, but he did do because he thought that it'll be his uh, hard track to paradise. Right. You know, he had to bear with it and all this kind of stuff. And he got a gloomy job, which he hated because he thought that. So I think Muslims should get out of this thing about, you know, when the Sahaba or the Awliya, when they go through uh, times in which there's tribulations and trials for them, it's like from Allah, but you don't put yourself into It's like the trial. person who makes dua for sabr. Now he's asking Allah to test him and send Musibat his way so he can show sabr. Yeah. So that means yeah. you shouldn't make dua for sabr. You should yeah, uh, th- that, that might be a new thing for the for the <laughs> viewers. Uh, don't make dua for sabr, <laughs> but say inna <laughs> lillahi wa inna I, I, I think what that means by yeah. sabr is that when, if any trial and tribulation yeah. was to come, if it was to come, then I am betterly prepared. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what it means. In as well, like give me Allah more, give, yeah, yeah, give, give me sense. more strength. <laughs> give me more strength in order to. So I heard that the Rasul Sallallahu for his family, he used to pray that uh, not that they are relieved from the problem, but they have the strength to handle the problem. Yeah. yeah? So th- that gives you your maqam, your darajah, etc. In, in regards to the Prophet Sallallahu sabr, we need to learn is that there's ishara in the Quran. Istainu bi sabr wa salah. Officer mentioned it yesterday in the dars as well. Okay, that if you want to learn how to contr- uh, you know be sabir on your uh, your the mushkil that you have then read namaz make dua sure. the hadith that uh, he alayhi salatu salam did any food to eat he came home and there was nothing to eat so and he asked us the aisha is there any food and she said no yeah nearly salat salam to the masjid and he made dua and what happened just after a short period usmani ghani he came and he, he came to the house of the Prophet ﷺ and he asked us to Aisha, where's the Prophet ﷺ? She said she's, he's gone to the masjid because there's nothing to eat. And as the Usman straight away he slaughtered a, 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 what's it called, a goat and he brought the food to the Prophet ﷺ. Mm-hmm. This it is where you, yeah. when, you sub, when you have a mushkil, make dua to Allah. Ta'ala. 
Uh, there's another riot where the Prophet ﷺ came to us at Asha Aditana and said that is there anything to you? She said uh, no. You know, you know, the way she gave uh, to a beggar lady who spit the 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 date in half and gave it to her two children. So the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, be be witness that I'm fasting. Mm. Uh, so that's like a continuation of mm. of uh, you know hunger. But the the point for us uh, people is that uh, uh, you know um, when something comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and you have no control over it you say oh, you know what can i do you know put my feet there's nothing else i can do but when um, there's something that you can change you should change that doesn't mean you know some people think that uh, sabr is you know if if somebody is causing you problems that you say oh i've got sabr you know i am fasting yeah. i am fasting what does it, it doesn't mean that you don't change yeah, don't shun the problem of yeah it doesn't the quran, it doesn't the mean the quran mentions ma asabaka min sayyatin fa min nafsik you know, any bad that comes your way is, is is due to yourself. You know, you have the ability to fix it and change it. Yeah, you know, yeah. So uh, you know, Hafsab uh, seems to be reading my mind today. So every time I want to try to come to something, he's coming to it. Mashallah. So yeah, so that was the one of the bits I was coming to. That, uh, so um, explain that. Explain what you just said about you know uh, it comes from you. So let's just say uh, I go home and uh, my wife's irritated because you've been cooking for my uh, iftari and sari all day and uh, and then she has a go at me so then i think oh it's because of my fault that you know she was cooking for me and it's my fault or how, how do i handle that it's all it's all my fault is I'm, it? I'm, yeah, I'm asking I'm, the wrong I'm person for marriage <laughs> advice <laughs> i think i'm, I'm gonna ask a, another question that's linked with yours okay that is in the middle yeah. right if all musibas are due to our own doings then how do you explain well qadri khairi yu sharri min Allah ta'ala I think this is the best the best explanation for it meaning yeah. you know it, this links to that question where people ask uh, if Allah knows uh, and this this has already decreed I'm going to heaven or hell what's the point of life yeah. the fact is he knows and he's decreed it but you don't you can only go off what you know isn't it so regardless of what the qadr is we will never have uh, the knowledge of that we just submit to it and we carry on working through, through life simple as that you know, Qadr, as Imam Malik said, questioning it is a bit Yeah. You know, we just get on with life. Don't question it. Don't don't think about it too much. So the musibah that comes due to our own deeds is actually taqdeer. Yeah, of course. Okay, fair well, enough. I, I thought Hafsa changes though constantly, doesn't it? Yeah. It uh, I, I thought Hafsa was going to say something. Yeah. You know, the musibah that came, so-called musibah in inverted commas, that came to prophets or pious men. You know, how do you explain that? That's the, that's how Allah demonstrates His miracles, isn't it? That's the Sunnatullahi fil ladina khalam in qabl. That's a whole different thing. But Allah does mention that He sends musibat because of our actions, but for the ultimate objective, in it, ظهر الفساد في ال you know بر والبحر ما كسب أيد الناس. But what people need to know that there's two types of deeds: the deed of mubram and the deed of right? And the deed of can change. Can change. Allah wants to. Yeah. He can change it. And the Mubram one is only written on the tablet, but the tablet doesn't know all knowledge. Allah is all knowledge, all knowledge yeah. and seeing. So if you make dua in whatever s- mushkil you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change all of your yeah, taqdeeds straight away. Right, yeah. So uh, that was a common question. Is Shabi Qadr? I know it's going to come up with, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was on the Shabi Barat and now in Laylatul Qadr as well. People say, so if I make dua or if I ask my parents or my murshid or teacher to make dua, then will Allah, will Allah change this for me? For example, I'm ill or I'm not getting married or don't have a job or whatever, fa- I've got family problem or something like that. Then will Allah change it? So what do we say to them? Keep making dua. Yeah. Just, just keep, keep making dua. And, and trust Allah. Wants to, yeah. Allah wants to. He yeah. will uh, change. And even if he doesn't change it, remember your dua is still a good deed. Yeah. Okay. You still the, obje- the objective of when Allah informs us about Qadr is not for us to truly understand Qadr. It's about that we hope in his power. That's it. It's not like, you know, trying to ponder, well, maybe Allah destined me to be Jah- go to Jahannam, so that I should leave it. That's not the point. The point is an encouragement that, oh, perhaps I'm in the people from Jannah, so I should carry on. I should carry on. It's encouragement. Yeah. In fact, there's hadith in the Arba'een of Imam Nawawi, isn't it? That in the Ahadakum la yajma khalqahu fi batni ummihi Arba'een laylan. That when you're in the yes, you know, yes. womb and the angel comes and he writes four things. Hadith number five. Hadith number five of the 40 hadith of Nawawi. Yeah. And then you're. Thumma yasbiqu alayhi al kitab. So a person is from the people of Ahl Jannah and he's living his life as he is. 
but he's not been decreed to go to Jannah. Yeah. So his decree catches him. Then he does an action that's uh, yeah. from the people of Hellfire's actions, yeah. Yeah. and he enters there. I mean, the decree is there. There's no, there's no doubting that Allah has made a choice, and that choice is the final choice. But like one of said, there's definitely uh, another type of decree which we can change. Dua changes it. You know, on those powerful nights, things can change. Should you change? So would it be correct for for me or any ordinary person to visualize it like this? For instance, um, the young generation say you're playing a video game online. For right. instance, okay. Um, the decree is that you know 20 minutes into the game you're going to drop your connection and you're going to be out the game right so from the start of the game if you don't know what's going to happen 20 minutes in, into it would you not try your best and play the game you know, to, to your to best, your best ability? of abilities that's what we're trying to say yeah. the game's a perfect example of decree so when the game was created let's take a modern game like Grand Theft Auto so in Grand Theft Auto there's a free world but every single possibility Every single thing that's got, that's going to happen in the game yeah. has been designed and decided by the developers of the game, mm. and the endings are the same. How you get to the ending is different, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely. So yeah. the game is the perfect yeah. example to understand decree. It shows you how a creator creates, and then you know you have freedom within that. I mean, you open that game now, you have total discretion. Should I go, you know, rob a car or whatever on that game that people do? You feel totally free, but at the end of the day, you're still limited. The outcome is always going to be the same yeah. when you get to a certain part in the story or wherever it is. Yeah. So is that the hadith in like that? Read the road, Allah will increase your knowledge, your uh, age. Okay. Okay. And that's the qadir of Allah. Wow. Yeah. Read the road, Allah will increase your, your age. Yeah. Yeah. The and the answer is, how does that happen? It's because by you reading the road, Allah will increase the knowledge the tablet doesn't know. Allah knows what your age is. Sure. Hmm. Right. Yeah, there's a misunderstanding yeah. amongst certain groups of yeah. Muslims that the tablet contains the knowledge of Allah. Yeah, this is a big, big problem. Yeah. You know, I mentioned it once uh, on a speech where somebody questioned me yeah. and uh, he says, You recite in the Burda, you know, I mean, Ulumika ilm al lawhi wal qalami. That the, from the knowledge of Prophet Sallallahu is the knowledge of the tablet and the, and the pen of decree. Yeah. Isn't that shirk? He said. I said, how would it be shirk? shirk? He goes, because, you know, Allah's knowledge is on that. I said, no, no, you've done shirk. Yeah. You're the one who's limited <laughs> Allah. Who, yeah. When did Allah say that all my knowledge is written down on the tablet and yeah. in the pen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then mm. never, Allah never mm. said that. And, uh, you know, uh, an important point that, you know, um, somebody actually asked me this uh, after a, a gathering uh, last Wednesday. Um, that... Um, if th this person he was born a Muslim, his family were Muslim, and uh, then just stop you. who who isn't born a Muslim? Uh, yeah, um, so me me meaning yeah, of course. That's something being clever there. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So basically, cho cho choosing my lines. Okay, so um, but then if you want to say that river, some uh, new Muslims let me put that they don't like to use the word no. river. Yeah. I think in, in the modern context, we as Muslims should stay away. It's a bit offensive to when it we do dawah. I used it once in front of the university people, and they found it very offensive. So we should stick to the word conversion in it. Conver yeah, conversion. Okay. Especially in, in uh, you know d d debates or polemics between religions. Yeah, yeah. Don't even it say is correct. It is correct. Yeah. It is correct. But yeah, don't don't even say reconverted. Yeah. So okay. So um, the. <laughs> so that was a new one. So <laughs> okay. So uh, this uh, this brother, um, uh, the, it was a Muslim family. Okay. Uh, so he was born into a Muslim family, but then they didn't study Islam. They were away from Islam uh, in the other culture, uh, and then the elders left Islam, and the youngsters left Islam. And then uh, he met uh, one of our friends, and he became muslim again and now he's having doubts again so one of the doubts which he had was something which we, you, you have sabah saying so he said that um it's not our fault that we sin i said why do you say that he said because um it wasn't our it wasn't our decision to be created so if god didn't create us we would not have sinned and gone no, to when it comes to those kind of things you yeah. really have to be strict that person's looking for a million and one, one excuses yeah. in his life. Yeah. D doubting decrees got nothing to do with doubting God. You get me? Those people, they've got bigger problems and they're looking for a scapegoat. Mm. You know, when they say, oh, it, God decreed for me to sin, it's because he's escaping an actual problem in his life. And you look into that, I've dealt with probably five cases. Yeah. But you just quiz them and you see they've found the scapegoat. That, you know what? It's not my fault and all these problems in my life, God decreed it, so I'm going to leave it. And therefore, I'm going to become an atheist and all of that. So when people say that, 
they're, they're actually not doubting their faith they've actually found a scapegoat for the problems yeah that's what atheism is yeah yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. The answer to that question, Imam Fahidin <coughs> Razi in Tafsir al-Kabir, he's answered that question. He's given a scenario. And the scenario is that, that there is a king who wanders the streets as a normal guy. He goes to a, uh, there's a fire, and there's a few people sitting around the fire. And they're robbers, and they're talking about how we are going to rob the king. And he joins them, and he's the king himself. There you go. Yeah. So now, over here, Imam Fahidin Razi, he says, the king has a choice. He can get them there and then punish them, or he can punish them after they try to rob him. This is the same example of taqdeer. Okay. Yes, you are, you have control of doing the same. Allah Ta'ala can punish you in the hereafter, but he's giving you a choice. That before you get there, stop. Mm. Before he punishes you, you stop <coughs> yourself. It's interesting we mentioned mm. Imam uh, Fakhruddin Razi, because I remember reading somewhere, it was in the English language, so I don't know if it's... Uh, you know, authentic, but there was once a case where I think he was visiting Makkah, Achha. the great Imam Fakhruddin Razi, and as he's walking through, you know, the markets, everyone's making space for him, like the great Imam Razi, the great, you know, scholar of philosophy, of theology, of tafsir, he's a master of all sciences, and there's this old woman who refuses to get out of the way, mm. and the people tell her, like, don't you know who's coming? Mm. And she's like, who's coming? And they said, Imam Razi, he wrote a thousand evidences for the existence of God, such a big, big scholar. And she goes, he only wrote a thousand evidences in the existence of God because he doubted God a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, yeah. is is it a problem to have doubts? Is is the question I'm leading to. You know this lad who's having these thoughts. Is yeah. it a problem to feel doubtful? Or is it okay? Does doubt lead to then clarification eventually if, it, if it's going to run the right uh, way? You know, um, I, uh, I met a lot of <coughs> university students and uh, brother Ahmed is a university student and, and you, they chat about stuff. And when, when I got to university, we began to chat about different things because you meet different people. You know, up to college is sort of okay, but then your mind suddenly opens up and you meet these different types of people. And we came to the conclusion that uh, there's no problem having doubts. It's whether you believe them. That's the problem. So in other words, with this particular brother, uh, I said to him that, you know, uh, the doubts, are they in your head or heart? Mm. And he that's said, actually, they're in my important. head. Yeah. yeah. And I said, where's your iman? He goes, somewhere yeah. on my chest. <laughs> or in my chest, yeah? So I go like deep, deep inside, like if it was just you and me here, not the other brothers here, nobody, just you and me. We were like the best of friends, yeah? And you were going to be honest with me. Deep in your heart, do you deny Allah? And he said, no, actually, I don't. I said, so again, where are your doubts? He said, in my head. <laughs> yeah. And that's so, the case with most people, though. Yeah. Even, even the great atheists of our times, if they, we can call them great. Stephen Hawking and what have you, these people all affirmed an existence of some sort of God. Yeah. Yeah, within their heart, they all accept it. Yeah. You know, most people, if you just witness at the time of death, they've accepted it, trust me. No, I, I was speaking to my <coughs> wife the other day, um, we were going to Morrison, and uh, <laughs> this thought came to my mind if someone denies God, right, the best way to make them understand well, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, right, is go to a jinn. Right. To a jinn. To a jinn. If, okay. you, if you can see a jinn, or you see someone with a jinn, with actual jinn, okay, it proves that Allah Ta'ala is there. Why? Because oh the jinn is ghayb. The but jinn is the that's, jinn. that's a difficult one because can you see jinn? There's, uh, no, you can't. Uh, you know, that's, so, that's a whole different question. Of it's it's the marid. It, it's, it's still ghayb. <laughs> it still comes it under ghaib. the banner. It is ghayb. It is ghayb. If jinns exist, <coughs> it just proves Allah is there. He's but is the, is the objective to prove the ghayb? The ghayb yeah. is the unprovable, isn't it? That's the whole point of Iman. Yeah. You know, like uh, if we were to say um, one at one yeah. equals two. Mm. We all know this. Yeah. It's tangible. It's measurable. We can test it ourselves. You don't need faith in that, do you? In that fact. You don't need faith in a fact is what I'm trying to say. What you can't prove, what you can't test, and what's not tangible, that's where you need faith. That's the whole point of a prophet. Mm. The prophets were sent to come and say, you know, there is belief in one God. Believe in me. Mm. Believe in me as a prophet. Yeah. So, <coughs> you know, when you go down that line, of course, you can prove the existence of God using yeah. philosophy and rational arguments. Mm. But, but you can really only go down that line <coughs> when you want to actually prove something to someone who has an option there. You know, <coughs> like, yes, you prove this to me and I'm going to I'm gonna go yeah. down. Like uh, I'll start saying, if it's sincere. Yeah. Doubt's okay if it's sincere exactly. is what he said. But um, what you see in most of these, um, you know, on YouTube and everything, you see pe people debating on, on religion. 
And most of these people, um, they tend to already come with a mindset which yeah. you know they're not going to change regardless of they're what not there saying. to seek the truth they're there to just challenge it exactly That's yeah it. and uh they have you know like in terms of doubt when you have a doubt in your head um it's always in your head yeah. like uh, the, uh brother was saying it's never in your heart doubt can't yeah. come from your heart it's always the external uh circumstances around you um for instance when you put hope in something like you know let for instance mm. to say um i hope i'm a millionaire tomorrow and I wake up tomorrow, I'm not a millionaire. Oh, God doesn't exist. You know, it's like, God make me a millionaire tomorrow. I wake up tomorrow, I'm not a millionaire. I believe that's mentioned e- even in a hadith, if I correct me, Hulana, that, uh, وَالْعَاجِزُ مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ The Prophet is dis- d- defining for us uh, the not so intelligent person is the one who follows his, uh, you know, lower self. And tamanna عَلَى اللَّهِ He has this false hope in God. I'll give you a real example of, of a recent situation of my own brother. My own brother who, you know, in his recent years started practicing pretty well. At the same time, business was doing really well and he called me whilst I was in Egypt. And he said, business is going really well and Alhamdulillah, I just prayed Fajr. So I thought that was really nice. Then I stopped him. I said, just pause there for a moment. Don't even delude yourself into thinking that because you prayed Fajr, business is going well. I said you should always pray for Fajr even if business is not going well. Mm. So that's that was I he, I know he didn't, but I was trying to stop him from setting setting up that false hope that me doing ibadat equals good life. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Quran actually promises you something quite different. Hasib yeah. nasu, you know, and yutraku and yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Surah An Kabut says, do the people assume that that they will be left just because they said amanna that they believe mm. and that they won't be tested? Yeah. Allah will test you so that He knows. Well, Allah will ladina sadiqu. So he, he will know who is truthful in their claim to believe in Allah and submit to Him, mm. and who is lying in that claim. But wouldn't it be to like applied on every single case in life where, you know, as we say, life has its ups and downs, mm-hmm. and whenever you mm. have a down, you like you put your hope in God, in Allah, what you believe, and if it doesn't go down, if it's meant to, if uh-huh. it's meant to be there to test. So Allah, this mentioned in the Quran. Where is this mentioned in the Quran? Surah Hajj mentions this. This is, uh, you know, we've got a table here and there's edge of the table. Allah said there are some people that worship Allah on the edge of the table. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَا يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ يعني الطرف فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرِ إِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ That if goodness comes his way, he's, he's at peace with this faith, with this ibadat with Allah. وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ فِتْنَةً إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ But if badness comes his way, he turns on his face. That person he's going to lose in this world He's going to lose in the next world That's the biggest loss So that's called worshipping Allah on the edge Which we don't want to do Um, uh, I've just been noting a few things while you guys were chatting Okay, first of all, as regards the jinn uh, There were some criminals in my side And they saw an exorcism, I was there And uh, they are practicing Muslims now Just thought I'd let you know that Uh, So because, and I said why And they said, it's just amazing you reading Quranic ayahs And it's having that much an effect And jinn is screaming, okay, okay, I'll leave this person alone And da 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 I I, I always find a problem with that kind of stuff though Uh I don't want to be devil's advocate here, but I think those things are being devil's devil's advocate. Up, carry on this, right. Why? Oh. Because you know, if the mere recitation of the Quran on a person and him becoming sane or the jinn leaving him is a evidence for the existence of God for you, then uh, what you've done is prove every single religion in the world is true. Because I've seen with my own eyes, I've witnessed with my own eyes, yeah. someone in the name of Christ yeah. be exercised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ask how I ended up in that position, yeah. in that situation, but I've seen it. Yeah. You know, with a uh, acquaintance of mine. Yeah, yeah. We, we so then, have. does that exist? Does that then prove, oh, if you do things in the name of Christ, yeah. that Christ is real yeah. and he's so the where's Iman Bill Gable? Exactly. To. Yeah, absolutely. But, but on yeah. a basic level, I do appreciate people who do see these things yeah. will submit to, you know, un- yeah. unseen powers. And you know, this thing about decree, um, we're running a marriage service, you see, and we have to keep on saying this and this again and again and again. So basically, uh, uh, we said that uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said before Allah Subhanahu Wa created creation. In fact, fifty thousand years before, uh, he wrote everything down. Ah. Okay, so it's interesting. You know, everything you talk about, I just read recently that you know in the Quran, wa khalaqa, uh, you know, wa khalaqna kum azwaja. Yeah, and and the Mufassir, I, I don't know if it's Qurtubi, I don't know, I can't remember, but it's in the Arabic language saying, you know how people think that you, your wife has been destined for you because Allah said that you were created from the pet. This is referring to Adam, alayhi salam. 
That's what these ayat are referring to. Mm-hmm. So I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, it is. When Allah says He created you in pairs and then He extracted from you your 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 spouse, yeah. that's referring to the creation of Adam alayhi salam. Not necessarily every single human being was you and your wife were one nafs and then you were separated, you know, into two nafs and then you're yeah. reunited again in the world. All nafs existed and you know communicated one another before. So, you know, when uh, this hadith that um, your wife is decreed for you, who are you going to get married to, when are you going to get married to, um, and but what how is long? it decreed for you then? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, in that sense, I, in other words, it's sort of what we call <laughs> delicate <laughs> tasalli. Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but you have to work hard on them on the earth. So, uh, they forget to say the next bit. So, um, so basically, um, uh, if if you're going to get the girl or the money or the job or good health or however in the right way or the wrong way that's your thwab or that's your guna that's your heaven or that's your hell you're only going to get what is decreed for you yeah so w- w- what we were talking about earlier yeah. but this this brother um when he uh, yes a scapegoat we understand that in fact i did say to him uh, study the sanusi creed that's absolutely brilliant in this is amazing so um uh, I, uh, when he was saying that um because it's not my fault that i was created it's not my fault that i sin and it won't my be my fault if allah throws me into hellfire yeah reason being reason being is because I didn't create the hellfire. I didn't ask to be created my, right. myself, and I didn't ask for free will either. <coughs> if Allah wanted, He could have just created us all in paradise. You know the same old sort of argument. So, uh, w- what would you say to him? If I met that person, I would say, "Okay, so that's all I'd say." Meaning, where do you want to go from that? Yeah. That conversation takes you to nowhere. When he says, "Oh, it's not my fault," I say, oh, "Okay, what do you want to do then?" Yeah. And so let him speak. You'll realize that it's a fallacy. What I'm saying actually doesn't mean anything. Regardless if Allah created those and de- decreed everything, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to end your life now? Then you yourself have thrown yourself into Jahannam, so you can't complain anyway. <laughs> do you yeah. get what I'm trying to say? All you can do is make the best of whatever opportunity you've got. If you're yeah. breathing, then breathe well. <laughs> it comes down, to, comes down to what Muhammad Ali, the book, famous boxer, once said. Um, you know, if I die, Some say he was a mujaddid. Yeah, you know, well, in, in his uh, respect. You know, people say a lot of things, but um, it's uh, when he said, um, if there is a God when I die, I want to meet him. So, you know, you, you it's the risk that you want to put there. Yeah. Like, you know, if you've got that doubt, you know, do you want to take the easy way out? And yeah, I think, you know, well, the, f- you the know famous Da'i. There are those ulama who've taken, they have so much belief in the taqdeer and especially in the love of the Prophet in regards to this. Ufti Ahmed Jahan Naimi Shahara. in his uh, tafsir Naimi he's written about the Iman of the parents of the Prophet. This is, might be something new for people. He's gone to that extent. He, he he's given like pages upon pages of the lie. Right at the end he says, If for example the parents of the Prophet don't have Iman, when I do dua, Allah puts me into hell and puts them into Jannah. The ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. yeah, meaning just uh, meaning that he has so much faith in the Prophet Yeah, that, that if he was to do that, most likely he'll listen to Allah and take him to the So, so uh, you this actually, uh, is, spoke right about this. I'm now sadaqna. What's interesting is uh, you mentioned Muhammad Ali. There's another famous da'i, uh, Sheikh Ahmad Dida. He was asked that same question: now What happens if you die and you realize it's all fake? And he goes. Uh, I believe something on the lines that if I die and I realize this, uh, he said, I'll feel a lot worse than, y- I'll feel a lot better than when you die and realize it's all true, is mm. what he said. And uh, I was questioned by, you know, Canon Reverend Phil at Victoria Park. He came and seen us about same question. He said, he's asked as a, as a Christian preacher, what happens if it's all fake? And he goes, at the end of the day, if what we believe in is fake, we would have led a good life on this world. And we, would have, would have, we would have left a nice legacy. That's it. Meaning it's only positive if you follow religion. It's only a positive. As opposed to, okay, live like a rebel, you know, cause corruption, die a bad life, leave a bad legacy to what avail. I mean, if, if it's all fake or, uh, or not, it doesn't matter. Follow religion, you'll have a good life. A happy life, you'll leave a good legacy. And we have a certainty that not only will you have a good legacy, but you'll have a good next life as well. Uh, uh, you know, uh, let's just say you're, you're traveling second class. Yeah, the second class meaning second class meaning oh you have to get it for fajr, 
<laughs> you know, etc. You have to read Dravi, you have to fast an entire month. Yeah. Allah yeah. let, let, Let's just say, for argument's sake, they say, ah, oh, you know, we don't, we, we got freedom. We can do whatever we want. You know, we go out. You know what's and, funny when yeah. we talk about Ramadan with non-Muslims? Yeah. They they look at us like we're so misfortunate. Yeah, I know. I know. Like I know, you can't. Know, eat, they don't realize we've been looking for this Ramadan. We we've been waiting for it our entire yeah. life. Like yeah. our entire year, we wait for this one moment. Absolutely. We're not misfortune. We can't wait to fast for the sake of Allah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, th- I think it was Imam Hadad who said that uh, if they knew what we got, they'll the kings will come with their armies to take him off Abu us. Hanifa. Yeah. yeah. Abu Hanifa. Yeah. yeah. Even if if, if they knew, if they knew. So, but um, let's just say we did travel second class throughout this life, and they were like first class, enjoying etc. If it turns out to be true. Yeah, then we only travel second class. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, one, one, one thing. What <laughs> yeah. You I like to that. know is there's no harm in traveling first class and doing Amr al at the same time. Perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. Jimmy. Of course, of course. Jimmy. In that, in that sense. Uh, you know, uh, one thing. You know, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanat. Now, you know, we, we the the hasanat that we're asking for. What is hasanat? Is something spiritual. Yeah. So when we say in the dunya hasanat and in the akhirat hasanat we're not really asking for because earlier on mentioning about asking for the dunya yeah so really we're asking for the hasanat <laughs> which is spiritual yeah you can ask rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqir any any khair allah has for us we need it yeah sometimes that is allah has taken things away mm. and sometimes yeah he absolutely is giving you but then some awliya they said that you know the the dunya and the akhirat is like say a mom and a daughter you can only marry one what, how do you put that into perspective? I don't know. I've never heard that. But <laughs> That's a bit weird. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe to those people who are seeking zuhud or something like that. Zuhud, those zahideen. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. That, so that's now we that's a whole different question. We're, we're, no, but we're coming to zuhud. I mean, you can't carry on sticking to the same <laughs> perspective. So let's talk about zuhud because which I wanted to. So basically, uh, you know, Ramadan, isn't it the best time to... To, to be a Zuhud, zuhud. Yeah, yeah. isn't it the single best I time? I think you need to, to translate what does Zuhud mean. Zuhud is a, an asceticism, a sort of divorcing of of any worldly needs or pleasures. Yeah, uh, is a common definition for it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Uh, I think people are different. Everyone has their own place. There are some people who, in Ramadan, they become more conscious of the community, more <coughs> social, and that to them is the best thing. Like, look at the volunteers of our masjid. Mm-hmm. There are volunteers who I know, and Allah preserve them. They sacrifice the option, or the, uh, the you know, opportunity to pray behind us tarawih, just so that the rest of the people can, and then they'll go and Absolutely. pray their own tarawih. Yeah, yeah, that's the ultimate sacrifice. And there are some people who will use Ramadan to go out of the public eye and go and worship Allah in private privacy. I think everyone, everyone's yeah, yeah. some people you know, are kul, serving kul, food kul to other ala shakilati. Everyone's working, yeah. and Allah's yeah. watching. Yeah. And they've Allah been knows. fasting all day, just like you, but they're serving food to the community, yeah. and then they sit down and eat afterwards themselves. Yeah. Then they have to rush for tarawi. I mean, <laughs> what we can say, there's not one way of worshiping Allah at any one moment. Anything can be ibadat of Allah, yeah, with righteous intentions. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, uh, one, th- you know, faith in the unseen, as you mentioned. You know, uh, I was speaking to a non-Muslim. I said, "What could be more amazing if somebody made a movie? Somebody made a movie about a guy who believed in something that nobody else believed in. He'd be a hero in the movie." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're heroes in that sense. We, mm. It's just amazing to believe in something that you've never uh, seen or someone that you never met. Yeah, it's just wow. I mean, yeah. I think they make superhero. You know, it leads to a question. Okay. <coughs> some people, um, I watched this clip online. Okay. Some people say, We've been to Hajj, we've been to Umrah, we've seen the house of Allah, we've, we've seen the Rosa of the Prophet, sure, sure. but I still feel the same. I don't, I don't feel any different. Uh, I don't go I don't back to the, the feeling, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't feel the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as an atheist would say. Wow, yeah. how do you feel yeah. the essence of Allah? <laughs> but but those people, Allah, should yeah. they carry on in the ibadah, they will get so much more reward. Absolutely. I think they would get more reward than us. Because they're struggling now. They don't have the same motivations we have, but still they're going to pray to Allah. I think Allah would love that more than, you know, like but a person what, who reads Quran yeah. fluently. Yeah. As opposed to a person who's got a stutter, that person gets double reward yeah. to fight that stutter, to fight this God-given, so to speak, natural, the de- you know, illness that he has, disability, and still to worship Allah, or read the Quran in, in that context. I think Allah would love that even more. So, so some something happened to me personally. Um, uh, I used to go to regularly, uh, like classes, dhikr, and for for example, tarawih comes up, etc. And I wasn't getting that feeling. 
I wasn't getting that feeling. I went to Makkah Sharif once. I like once. how you put Taraweeh and Dhikr Majlis like. Yeah, you know, same to, just to keep it, everybody happy. And uh, oh, I went so. to Medina Sharif or Baghdad Sharif and, and I wasn't getting that feeling. I hear uh, that Nasheed's knots of Rasul Sarasam all love and etc. When you're there, you think, oh, what's going on here? Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, some of the people who were with me, they went to India to great darbars of awliya and they saw those awliya, those darbars when they were in their city and I didn't. So I had a bit of a face on. So I was thinking, like, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. So there was one teacher. Uh, he was actually a Bengali teacher. <laughs> He's a mashallah. So he, he, he actually... They say um, bin ghal. I mean <laughs> bin ghal in Arabic language. <laughs> the, the, son, the son of a, you know, ghal. Expensive. Uh, precious thing. <laughs> precious, of course. Precious. So that, that's what I'm mentioning somebody precious. So um, uh, I said, well, what's going on here? He said, oh, it's really good. I go, why is it really good for you? He, he goes, just stay constantly what you're doing. Watch what you get at the end. Mm. You get more than, you know, like for some people, they have to see it to believe it. But that's less than those who don't see it and believe it. And so if you don't get the good feeling, it doesn't mean that you're a bad Muslim. Mm. It doesn't mean that you're not progressing. Yeah. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking you through something. Yeah. As long as you're, you're, you're sort of doing, doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, what, we, what we should clarify is Allah yeah. is not, Closer to those places <laughs> Do you understand yeah. It's not that if you go to the mosque You're closer to Allah Because he's there or anything like that Allah is equidistant to everyone yeah. uh, The biggest wali in the world Has the same distance between him and Allah as we do Meaning Allah never went away from anybody yeah. You know when they say you know, uh, What does it take to find Allah says, when, when did you lose him He never went anywhere yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, Coming to the uh, In regards to you know, Ibadah the Different types of Ibadah Someone asked me this question, and it was in regards to organ donation. <laughs> okay. Right. Can can we, you know, donate organ in for, with the intention of helping someone? Right. Well, before yeah, you go, I, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't answer the question ever. That, that's a hot topic. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> that's but, what. But the answer I, I gave was like he says okay, that even removing something from the road. Hmm. To help someone is the smallest deed that you can possibly yeah. do. And donating some your own organ to someone to help someone is is actually bigger. Yeah. Hmm. So well, um, you know, yeah. to our previous uh, um, topic, you know, when people say um, I've been to Makkah, Medina, hmm. uh, oh. Sharif, and you know, I've not had that feeling, I've not yeah. had that vibe to it. Um, it's subjective. It's completely subjective. Having been gone there um, twice myself, Alhamdulillah, mm. it's completely subjective to how you spend your time there. Um, I've seen with, with my own eyes, I've seen uncles and aunties, um, you know, they're living luxuriously in the clock tower I in Mecca. And, you know, because it comes in the region of the harem, they don't actually go down to the harem. Oh, to so the just stay harem there to pray. They, they go down in this little prayer room they've got built there. You know, they've got the AC on and everything and they've prayed and everything. They've gone I've back to their room, put on the TV. I've heard that there's a swimming pool in there. Yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah, they're is. living luxuriously and it's almost like it's almost like a, a very Western style of holiday, but it's not up to par with the Western style of holiday. So they're going to come back with regret. They've not had that holiday that they were looking for. Yeah. And um, whereas I've had a really good experience there where, you know, I was taking the local bus, um, you know, not even the taxis or the new shuttles wh um, whatever service they've got now I was taking the old style bus there to Masjid Aisha wearing their haram <coughs> feeling the cats there you know they've got a yeah, lot of lot anyone cats, uh, inshallah yeah. you know you get opportunities Tanarim. to go and see it for yourself if you've not seen there's a lot of um, monkeys on Ghara Hira yeah, yeah. Um, Baboons. and there's a lot of cats there so I was feeding the cats there <laughs> and um, I seen this mother cat I seen this mother cat that I, um, I bought milk for and fed it and it um, it kept meowing and you know mm. it kept going a bit forward so I started following it um, got behind this little uh, you know little uh, uh, like little part where they have uh, designated for people to wear harams okay um, like almost like a little shower kind of thing and I seen that uh, the cat took me there and it's got little kittens there everywhere so you know no know, uh, <laughs> knowing me I went back got some more milk um, mm. you know gave it to the, the kittens, kittens. Yeah. And subhanAllah, the next thing it actually surprises me, t like today, like, you know, I don't know how this happened, but I found a um, uh, Saudi Rial there on the floor. It was like 20 Rial or something equivalent. Um, so with that money, I went out, you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, Allah's put me on a mission <laughs> here. You know, I bought more milk and fed. I've actually got videos um, of this. Uh, I actually uh, fed all the cats there, Masjid Aisha, most that I could see. 
um, you know, and I came back, and that was in 2017 and 2018. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me another opportunity to go uh, on Umrah again in Ramadan, and that was coming back from Hajj. So, Beautiful. you know, it's about the intentions of how you want to spend yeah. your time. Anything while can you're become your brother. Yeah, yeah. And you know, me coming back now, uh, you know, I'm not gonna have that regret. I didn't feel, uh, I didn't feel that sort of vibe or something. You know, what people yeah. are seeking. It's about how you spend your time there. Yeah. In the moment, if you wanna, you know, absolutely. Like not want to pray, you know, go on a holiday. You want to go Jeddah. So you think you, you think these people who went and they're saying we didn't feel anything is because they, they didn't try, well, or they didn't do something. Well, the, it's, it comes down to the fact that you know, then people that are praying in the prayer rooms built in the clock tower, they're still trying, but you know, they wouldn't get the same vibe of people, you know, uh, hustling Gone right in front of the crowd. I think the other thing, thing is that they're going with the wrong intention. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> if you look at it. They're going with, with the wrong intention. That yeah. I want to get that vibe. Mm. Why do you want that vibe? It's up to Allah to give you that vibe or not. Yeah. But wouldn't you also blame like the Saudi government authorities? No. You know, for creating them distractions there? No, because w- you shouldn't expect anything from them anyway. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not like, True. even if there was nothing there, when there's still the fitna of women there. Yeah. In, in their haram. I mean, if you go in there expecting the Saudi government to make everything perfect for you, mm. you, you've got the wrong intentions yeah. again. I mean, tribulation. <coughs> if you ask them, yeah. you know, <coughs> that is your fault. They're saying you know we're making it easy for you. Mm. And yeah. you <coughs> yes. Mm. So you, you go to Mina, when Mina used to be an empty field. Mm. Now you go there and you go and you live in the tents, mm. right? And you see everything is there. Very easy. Every si- every person has got like a, a mattress there. Every person is underneath the AC. Yeah. Every person so like gets on the on the yeah. bus from Mina to Muzalfa from there back to yeah. Haram. Okay, that's a good I agree with yourself in the self in the sense that those yeah. people s- could have definitely done something to ha- change that situation. Yeah. Mm. But at the same time, ourselves right, they've gone with the wrong intention, mm. seeking the wrong thing. If you go with the wrong intentions, it's not going to work out. Is someone it? Um, to take your advice on someone planning to go, would they want to uh, not book the most luxurious hotel, even if it's no? Cheap you do whatever you want, but go with the right intention, innit? Mm. Go with the right intention. Like wouldn't wouldn't be reward for yet. like you know um, spending the time in the heat rather than going no into no no not at all. Why do you want Se- yourself seeking difficulties? There's no reward yeah, in that. Yeah. Why do you want to put yourself into mushaka? It's like mm. um, you're a musafir, mm. and so the four cards are two now mm. for you. There's no more r- reward for you if you pray the four. It's like if Allah gave you the ease, take advantage of that ease. That's from His rahma that He's given it to you. You don't seek difficulty. Obviously, there's a fine line between getting in the swimming pools and the clock tower, mm. you know, rather than going, you know, and drinking zamzam or something. Yeah. There's a there's a fine line. Yeah, so I heard of a helicopter hajj as well, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, so um, uh, you know, <laughs> that's making it too easy. Um, you know, uh, we would we started off talking about uh, good feeling yeah. and going on to spiritual states and the nafs, and then we, as usual, went around the arena. Um, and uh, one of the things, nafs uh, mutmainna, may Allah help us all to achieve it. This from Zan Sharif, yeah. Um, the uh, that uh, we've seen those people who've reached those levels the biggest things that they do is serving mankind that could be preaching to mankind or serving them in different ways as well khidma. okay so khidma yeah absolutely so ibadah and khidma as we said at the beginning like linking the two together mm-hmm. ibadah equals khidma in that kind of way because we don't know our spiritual states um, and we just continue as, as Allah wants us to continue khidma. in that way Sayyidun Nas Khadimuhum Ah, the master of the people is the one who serves them it is the one who serves them absolutely um, and uh, the last thing which I wanted to say is we're running out of time uh, just r- because du'as are important in Ramadan everybody say oh make du'a make du'a make du'a you know is it okay to make du'a in this way because um, some some people have alhamdulillah new questions so the, the question was um, instead of saying Allah will give me isn't better yakin to say Allah has given me Mm. Well, in terms of du'a, um, I heard from my father, Hazrat Ali, uh, once someone approached him and said, uh, can you tell me why my du'a isn't accepted? He said, well, you know, question yourself this instead, that why hasn't Allah punished you for any sins that you commit immediately? You know, it's it's like a grey area that you're not yeah. allowed to go to, you shouldn't go to. I think well, with... Khalas Bari, you're saying Allah has given me. Isn't it we always make du'a for something that we haven't got? Mm-hmm. So then, how can you say he has when you haven't got it? 
The person was talking about you. There is a form of dua uh, yeah. from the adab of dua. There is a book on adab of dua. Do you know what it's called? Sayyidi Allah Hazrat's father, Nabi Ali Khan, he's written a, a, a very thick book on dua. Yeah, I was thinking of Yusuf and Abhani's one as well or something. Where you begin by mentioning what he has given you and why you praise him for that. Yeah. Like, Allahumma laka alhamd kama hadaytana ila al-islam. Yeah. Wa kama balaktana shahr Ramadan. Like, you mention what he has given you and you do hamd of that. And hamd is one of the greatest du'as. Mm. It's a hadith that afdalu dhikri la ilaha wa afdalu du'a alhamdulillah. Because when we make hamd for things, shukr of things, we're asking for mazid. Yeah. La in shakartum la zidannakum. When we thank him for it. So there's nothing wrong with saying, Allah, you have given me X, Y, Z. As long as he's intending to praise Allah, or thank him for saying that. Yeah. Uh, say, say if an ill person that. says uh, Allah with, with meaning with yaqeen yeah. uh, well, a lot of du'as begin by uh, uh, recognizing what Allah has done yeah. and then asking Allah to do more for us or give us more absolutely that's a beautiful way of it an ill person says Allah ha- he's ill now but he's saying Allah has given me health yeah. meaning to that level of yaqeen so uh, people are, somebody's poor very poor poor at this moment in time say Allah has made me rich, rich yeah. yeah. So in that sense, meaning that uh, 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 the level of yakin, because people pray every Ramadan probably for the same du'a and it's still not come after twenty years. So in other words, uh, Allah is not poor. Definitely, if the whole of mankind stood in one spot and asked him for something, he won't re- re- remove a needle amount of his treasures. So the thing is that, so somebody then cleverly asked this question: say has rather than will. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that uh, Allah will appreciate that more because Do you know I think we should also create um, within people the feeling that it's okay if he doesn't give it you yeah like yeah. you know when you nurture a child yeah you don't always give it what it needs yeah. or what it wants yeah sometimes it's good not to give things yeah. and sometimes as a parent and I've, as an uncle I can speak and as a, you know to my nephews and nieces we have things that they want and we don't give it on purpose because we want to see them come to us so you know for you said 20 years a person has got his dua isn't it beautiful that he's because he hasn't got it he's there 20 years asking Allah he's still yeah and Allah yeah, had he given it to had Allah given it you know Allah knows best Allah maybe he would have turned away and became ingrateful absolutely uh, yeah okay so. right Jazakum al for joining us today inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah we're gonna see you tomorrow <laughs> Jazakum al-hair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh